Cardin Children's Medical Center, providing comprehensive pediatric care for Arizona's families. Well, she was born premature. She was 34 weeks. And when she was born, she was sick and she was vomiting and she had a fever and she was jaundiced. But her fever got under control and the jaundice got better and we were discharged from the hospital. You know, we, we got her home from the hospital after a few days and uh, she was vomiting constantly. Every time that you fed her, she couldn't keep it down for more than a few minutes. We were told that she probably had acid reflux. Sit her upright and stuff like that and it just wasn't working. Twelve days after she was born, my husband and I just looked at each other and said, there's something wrong, and so we took her to the hospital. We walked into the emergency room, and the first thing the lady said to me was, has her head always been this big? Well, yeah, it has. You know, my husband and I are looking at each other like, what's going on? Why are they, she's vomiting. Why are they asking us about her head? And they took us right back, didn't get any information from us really other than her name and date of birth. Dr. Moss happened to be walking through the emergency room. And I think in her case, I was in the newborn ICU seeing uh, some other children. And immediately, the, laying in the next bed is a baby with a very big head, and it seems very obvious that there must be some hydrocephalus or water buildup there, and that's when I got involved with Emma and her family. And Dr. Moss uh, took one look at her and just said, I know what's wrong with her. And he said, get her to MRI right now. And it was just a wild ride after that for a while. Hydrocephalus is a condition in which the water inside the brain is not, is produced at the proper rate and the proper manner, but it circulates out or can't, and can't be reabsorbed. So the water builds up. It's being made, but not being absorbed, and the water backs up. In the old days, they used to call it water on the brain. Test results came back. He came and got my husband and, and me and sat us down, pulled up the scans. This is Emma when she was two weeks old, and this white area in the center of the, vent of the brain is the water. And it's supposed to be nothing but small slits of water, not filled up so large. The brain is pushed on the inside of the, the skull, and it's very thin back here and hardly visible down here at the bottom. Um, so the amount of hydrocephalus that Emma had was just extensive. The brain that normally fills the whole skull was just pushed on the inside of the skull by the water buildup. We normally make water in these ventricles. The water's made at a rate of maybe a glass full a day. That water circulates around inside the ventricles, comes out of the brain, over the surface of the brain, that gets reabsorbed back into the bloodstream. And if the blood can't get, or the water can't get out of the brain, it just builds up and up and up, makes the head big, makes their eyes go downward, um, makes, makes them look very sick. And also it's usually accompanied with nausea, vomiting and throwing up. You know, it's pretty surprising because it, it's so common. You'd think more people would know about it, but you know, I like a lot of others hadn't heard of it before, so I had no idea what it meant or anything. We learned all the signs of hydrocephalus. It was just it was just clear as day. And if we look on the other side of her head, this is a big blood clot that was inside. And around the outside of the blood clot is all this water building up. The blood she had a hemorrhage in the brain that, or in the ventricle of the brain, that blocked the spinal fluid from getting out, and then the water just built up like this, and the head got bigger and bigger and bigger. My placenta abrupted, and so that caused her to have an interventricular hemorrhage, and that caused the hydrocephalus. The normal part of the, of the ventricle is very small. You can see the difference between the ventricles here, which are very, very small, and the brain fills most of the cavity, and here the water is filling up the vast majority of, of, uh, of the head. First, it was just a matter of um, having to you know, go through surgery to relieve the pressure and stuff, and just trying to cope with 
that in trying to understand, you know, what kind of, you know, what kind of life it was going to be after that for her. We didn't know what was going to happen next. He said, you know, this is how we, you know, fix it. We put in a shunt and he explained what the shunt does and, and what hydrocephalus is. In the early 1900s, there really was no treatment. If you got the, quote, dreaded water on the brain, you were going to die. And it wasn't until the 60s that they developed some tubes that would you could put in the head that would drain the water somewhere else to be absorbed. There's a tube that is put down into her brain that um, has little holes in it to let the fluid get in. And it connects up to a, a valve that sits underneath the skin in her, on her head. And, uh, and then there's just a tube that runs down to her abdomen and lets it drain, lets the fluid pressure drain into her abdomen and it just reabsorbs into the body there. And he said, you know what? He said, she's gonna grow up, she's gonna graduate, you're gonna invite me to her graduation and it's gonna be okay. <laughs> and I, I just, I don't remember the time frame, but soon after that she was in having her first shunt surgery. Emma's problem is that she's got hydrocephalus, but she also has cerebral palsy from the injury, and she also now has a seizure disorder. And each one of those carries with them more complications and more reasons for not being able to live a full life. So in some children's cases, it's not just hydrocephalus, but it's everything that goes with it that limits their life. And so we've had to do a lot of adjustment. There's lots of therapies that we have to deal with. Physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy. Because of the hydrocephalus, she has vision issues. Emma's got a wonderful personality. You know, it, it's so much fun to come home at night because you open up that door and you have this little four-year-old going, Daddy, Daddy! And she's so funny. It's easy with Emma. She's such a star. She's so cute. She's all, she is always there cooperative and, and she's always upbeat. Every time she's in the hospital, even when she's sick, she wants to get up and play. She wants to go home. She wants to get better. And she's got the greatest supporting family, which makes it so much nicer because she's got an uphill battle. She's got two cheerleaders on her side helping her everywhere she goes. But it's just that bright smile, quick little wit that she has that's, that's so enjoyable. It's that personality. She just lights up a room and demands to be center of attention. She's kind of a little ham, but that's okay because I think her, you know, she's strong-willed and I think that's gonna get her through, you know, whatever comes her way. And, you know, she's just a fighter. She's, she's gonna do whatever she wants to do when she grows up, I'm sure. I really am. Thank you.